and welcome to Polynomials 5.2 Inverse Functions. Okay, so today we're going to study inverse functions. And this is not something new. You guys have actually been doing it a lot, probably ever since like Math 7 or Math 8, or what it was called pre-algebra maybe for some, for some kids. And it's basically like solving for x. Yeah? So basically what we're going to do is, usually when we work with functions, we plug an input in, and whatever number we plug in, we get some kind of an output or an answer, okay? But when you started to solve for x, when you guys learned that there was a, a, a letter in math, and you guys are probably like freaking out, right? Like, whoa, there's like letters in math. Yeah, how do I do that, right? And that was probably your first exposure to inverse functions. So let me give you an example. So if you had, for example, 2x equals 10, right? x is usually where you plug stuff in or your input but we don't know what that number is. So we want to try and figure it out, right? So that's what it's called solve for X. So we have the output, which is 10, but we need to figure out what made that 10 happen. And that's kind of like what we're going to do today. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to show you guys how this, this thing called inverse functions work. And it's going to be very similar. Yeah. And in terms of, I guess, um, concept, to solving for x, where in this problem you're going to say, oh yeah, I know what number I have to plug in to get a 10. I got to plug in a 5. So you get x equals 5, right? So you just solve for the number that you need to make 10 happen, which is a 5. Yeah, And that's pretty much basically what inverse functions do. It allows you to solve for the number that you need to get the result you want. Okay? All right, so let's go to our first problem. So when they write inverse functions, they write it a little different. Okay, and a lot of kids, when they see it, they go, oh, look, f to the negative 1 power. No, that is not f to the negative 1 power. Okay, when you see that negative 1 next to the f or negative 1 next to the g, that is called inverse function notation. Okay, and it's basically saying, right, that your answer is negative 4. So what number did I plug in to get that answer of negative 4? Yeah, so that's why I have this little, this little um, sentence here on the bottom that says, Okay, so this graph is called f, yeah? So when do I have a y value of, and I put a blank there because every every problem is different, right? Every every problem is going to have a different number in the parentheses. So what you're basically going to do is you're going to put whatever numbers in the parentheses in this blank. So we got a negative 4 for my first parentheses. So in my graph called f, which is right here on the right-hand side, when do I have a y value of negative 4? So here's my, here's my y value of negative 4. What x value corresponds to a y value of negative 4? So you, you go straight up till you hit your, your x-axis, and it, when you go straight up, you're going to see it corresponds to a 5, and you're going to put a 5 in that spot. And there you go. Plugging in the number 5 will give you a y value of negative 4. Okay, so let's look at letter B. So it says F with that negative one as the power, which like I said, is that's not a power. So don't confuse that. That is called inverse notation. Okay, inverse function notation. Okay, so basically it's saying, right, this three represents my answer. Yeah, so what number corresponds, what number did I plug in to get an answer of three? So in the graph called F, when do I have a y value of 3? So ooh, let me erase the previous dot that I just made for the previous problem. And let's find a y value of 3. So y value of 3 is right there. There's a y value of 3. So what x value corresponds to him? And hopefully you say negative 2. And if you said that, good job. You're on the right track. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next two problems, C and D, which are not going to deal with this graph anymore. They're going to deal with the table. So in the table called G, when do I have a G of X value of negative 1? So let's look for the G of X value of negative 1 and see who it corresponds to. So here's my G of X value of negative 1. So what X value brought it up? A 2 did. Okay, so here's where a lot of kids, they make a mistake. They do, they circle this one instead because they see a negative one. But you got to remember, we're doing the opposite. They're giving us the answer. Yeah? We got to find what x value created that number, negative one. 
and the two did that. Okay, so when you when you read these tables and when you read the graph, yeah, you gotta you gotta do reverse thinking of what you normally do because normally we look at the left side column, the x column. Normally we look for the x value first when we plot our dots, right? But when you do inverse functions, you gotta look at the the right side column for a table or the y value for your graph. You gotta do the opposite of what you normally do. Okay, so let's erase these circles. All right, and let's do our next problem. Okay, so it says inverse of g is 3. So in the table called g, when do I have a g value, a g of x value of 3? So let's see, what do I have a g of x value of 3? Here's my g of x value of 3. What x value corresponds to him? Negative 1 does. And there you go. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. This is a video, like I always say, just rewind if you guys need to see it a couple more times. Next problem. Okay, so now we're going to do inverse functions and we're going to solve for it algebraically. So when you do inverse functions, you're pretty much just going to follow these four steps. Okay, and know these four steps really well because it's going to come up a lot more in this class and in your classes next year. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll go over each of these four steps um, in, in more detail as I do my first problem, but this is basically the, the picture of the four steps. Yeah, so if you guys ever forget what the four steps are, just go back to this picture. It's in your packet also. All right, so let's do our first problem. So it says find the inverse of f. Yeah, so inverse of f corresponds to this equation right here. Be sure you guys do the right inverse for the right function. Yeah, so this is f, the other one is g. That's going to be problem b. Okay, so we're going to find the inverse of f. So we're going to write down our problem. So f of x equals 4x minus 6. Well, what is that line that just got drawn? That's not supposed to be there. Okay, so step one says erase f of x and replace it with y. That's what step one says. So that's what I'm going to do. Erase the f of x, write y. Okay, that's step one. So I can write a little one there. Step two says switch places. So grab the y, grab the x, and switch places. So where I see the y, I'm going to write an x. Where I see the x, I'm going to write the y. And here's where a lot of kids make a mistake. When they do this second step called switching, a lot of kids, they put the 4x on the left, and they put the y, they put y minus 6 on the right. So they actually grab everything, and they switch everything. No, you're not grabbing everything. The numbers stay in the same place. The letters are the only things that switch. So notice how the 4 stayed the same. The 4 did not travel with the x on the left side. The 4 stayed on the right side. So be careful about that. When kids make a mistake, that's where you make the mistake. Okay, so... Third step, solve for y. Okay, so basically get y by itself. So this is going to be a big step, right? This is not just going to happen with one step. So step three is going to be a little bigger. So we're going to add six on both sides. So let's change the color because we're going to solve for y, right? We're going to get y by itself. So add six both sides. So we get x plus six equals four y. And to get y by itself, we're going to divide by four. And you're going to get y equals x plus 6 over 4. Okay, so that's step 3. And step 4, I guess I can't make it fit. I guess I didn't leave enough room. So here's step 4. So step 4 says erase the y and put back your inverse notation. So put back inverse notation, which is that. That's my inverse notation. So erase y, replace it with that, and then write x plus 6 over 4. And there you go. There's your final answer. Okay, you see how that works? So just follow those four steps and you'll be fine. Okay, so let's do function g. So let's write out my function. So g of x equals 1 half x plus 3. So let's do step 1. So step 1 says erase g of x and write y instead. So let's do that. 
Oops, what am I doing? It's not negative one half. What am I doing? Sorry about that. So one half x plus three. Okay, step two says switch places with x and y. Okay, so I'm going to write x equals one half y plus three. And be sure, do not write the one half next to the x when you switch places. Leave the one half where it is. Okay, step three, big step. Solve for y. So solve for y. Subtract three both sides. Oops, wrong color, purple. Okay, and then I get x minus three equals one half y. Okay, and to get rid of the one half, we're going to multiply both sides by two to make that one half disappear. So we get y equals two. You're going to distribute, I guess, too. So two x minus six. Okay, you're going to distribute, and that's step three. And step four is write your inverse notation. So erase the y and put back your inverse notation. So there's my inverse notation. And there you go. There's your final answer. All right. Hopefully this made sense. Uh, this video is a little bit shorter than the previous two that were just made. So I hope you guys like that. Uh, just make sure you guys watch this video as many times as you need so that you guys know how to do these problems. Good luck and I will see you in class. Bye-bye.